Hello and welcome to God's Minute. I'm Pastor Jonathan Conrad. I'm the senior pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Wilmington, North Carolina. And this week, we are looking at that very popular Old Testament prophet, Nahum. Now, many of you probably don't even know Nahum is in the Bible, but he is in the Bible. He is one of the 12 minor prophets. He's number seven if you're taking a list at home. And so we are going to have fun talking about this book and the direction it takes when it concerns a certain city that we have talked about before, and that was back in Jonah. But let's begin our week of Nahum with today's reading. An Oracle Concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum of Elkosh. A jealous and avenging God is the Lord. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and rages against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power, and the Lord will by no means clear the guilty. His way is in whirlwind and storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So Nahum is one of the minor prophets that we find in the Old Testament. We don't know much about him because this is the only time throughout the Old Testament that he is mentioned. And in this book, we have an oracle. An oracle is a message from God. And we see a lot of these oracles throughout the Old Testament, in particular, the prophets. And in this particular passage, this oracle is presented as an acrostic. Now, an acrostic is a type of poem that the first letters of each sentence spell out a message, or it spells out the alphabet. And in the particular, this one, it spells out the Hebrew alphabet. And that's 22 letters. But let me give you an example of what an acrostic poem looks like. Cuddly, acrobatic, tenacious, softly purring, judging. That's right, I'm talking about cats. But in the Hebrew language, that's what this oracle would look like using the first letters of the alphabet. So the book concerns the destruction of Nineveh and how Israel and the Jewish people should react. Now, Israel probably wonders what happened to Nineveh. We probably are wondering the same thing. Well, didn't Jonah say that Nineveh repented? Well, Nineveh did repent, but maybe they unrepented. We're not really fully sure of the full, all the reasons, but what we can know is from personal experience. We too have repented from God, and there are times that we have unrepented. We have walked to God, and we have walked away from God. So this is a very human reaction that we have in our relationship with God. So the people of Israel knows what it's like to have God's wrath, because that is one of the reasons that Israel is no more. They turned away from God. But what's different in God's approach to Israel, as opposed to what God does with Nineveh, is that when God destroys Nineveh, that's it. But when God destroys Israel, God then offers Israel his refuge. So there is a second chance when it comes to Israel. It's kind of like a parent who punishes a child when a child has done wrong. The parent still loves that child, but there still has to be some kind of punishment for whatever wrong that child has done. So you do that out of love and you do that to build that relationship and you do it to teach your child a lesson. And so one thing that we can look at is Nahum points to God as a refuge among the turmoil. For Israel, the turmoil is being in exile and wondering what the next day is going to be like. And for us, with this pandemic, what is the next day going to be like? And as Nahum would tell us, we can see refuge and we can find refuge in God through this tough time. So even though Nahum is a very short book, there's a lot to unpack, and I look forward to unpacking it with you. You have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow for another edition of God's Minute. You take care and God bless.